Big days in Cardano and its ecosystem just keep coming and are showing no signs of slowing down. Today at the turn of the epoch, IOG will have seamlessly delivered an industry-defining upgrade as we welcome full Vassal capabilities with the arrival of the second wave of improvements. This arming developers with exactly what they need to start building out and deploying significantly more scalable and complex dApps will pave the way for a new era of DeFi done differently. No mainstream narrative, PSYOP campaign or malicious agenda is going to prevent Cardano from getting to where it's going. From its tech, values, integrity and community formed around it, a very clear picture for anyone paying attention is now emerging. Cardano is pursuing a mass adoption strategy like no other. Rather than focusing on changing the minds of the naysayers, Cardano is fully focused on changing the world. Whilst it's still true, outside of Cardano and its community, many still remain ignorant to exactly what is materialising here. The research-driven, slow methodical approach is now picking up considerable momentum snowballing away from the control of the narratives formed across years of misinformation, firmly placing its destiny in its own hands, and for everyone already on board, this promises to be one hell of a ride. Welcome back for today's instalment of Cardano Insights, where we track the all-important developments at the very pulse of Cardano and its ecosystem. So let's get straight into it. First up, we're going to take a brief trip back into Clown World with a look at a reaction provoked from a recent Charles thread that seemingly struck a nerve with a prominent Ethereum developer and researcher, even Van Ness. Now whilst at times, even amongst the Cardano community, Charles divides opinions with his online interactions, for me personally, I love seeing him clap back, speak his mind and tell it how it is. It's his no-nonsense straight talking shoot from the hip approach that's got him and Cardano exactly where they are today. So with that said, let's dive in. So here Charles wrote, I always wondered why the Ethereum crowd is so obsessed with my six months there in 2014, and then after the merge, it all made sense. They just seemed to really like technology and events from 2014. Levity aside, people really need to grow up and move on. It's fair game to discuss major differences in protocol design. I repeatedly pointed out that the core dip engineers of Ethereum completely ignored Ouroboros throughout the last five years. It's a crime on that side of the fence to even mention Cardano. If you don't believe me, then send me links or interviews or posts discussing our technology objectively. You just won't find any. It's bereft of any intellectual honesty and common sense. There is a bizarre parallel world where everything Cardano has done is a useless scam that couldn't possibly be innovative. Rather, we're a cult beholden to an evil sociopathic but incompetent pathological line founder who has somehow stumbled upon stolen success, but will be in jail any moment now when the world wakes up. It would be offensive if it wasn't so bat profanity crazy. The end result is that it just hurts the industry, adoption, collaboration, and means that many users are now forced into design decisions that hurt them instead of help. I guess that's human nature, but at least we can make a choice to not succumb to it. With every HFC event, Cardano continues to deliver on its potential to be something better for the world's systems. Its community continues to grow and evolve. Next year, we'll make our largest contributions ever to governance and user experience. We'll do that together, and we don't need to hate anyone or develop bizarre conspiratorial thinking in order to accomplish our goals. The reality is Cardano doesn't need cryptocurrency to be successful in order to succeed. Mass adoption hasn't happened yet, and we can grow to billions of users without poaching a single one from Bitcoin or Ethereum. We just need to be good at solving real life problems, and that's been the focus of our community. I'm proud of them, and it's remarkable to see how much progress we've all made. I'm sorry that our industry behaves this way at times, our community doesn't deserve it, but I believe none of that will matter in the end because we're going to change the world. So some pretty interesting and accurate thoughts from Charles here. Now, Even was clearly triggered by this, and in turn, took to the stage to play his part in a leading role in Clown World basically confirming the point Charles was making in publishing his thread in the first place. Captioning the part when Charles referred to not needing cryptocurrency to be successful in order for Cardano to succeed, and that mass adoption hasn't occurred yet, therefore we can grow to billions, even responded, he actually tweeted this, Cardano has never consistently had more than one transaction per second, Ada is a stain on the industry that never seems to wash out. There seems to be a distinct correlation between Ethereum delivering severely underwhelming, outdated and inferior technological updates to their researchers posting absolute garbage and lies about Cardano. This is designed to deflect the attention in the hope that it will distract their community from focusing on their own failings. Rick McCracken did kindly point out that Cardano does indeed deliver more than one TPS with this screenshot from C Explorer, to which even hid the reply in the comments, which I guess says it all really. 
In believing one TPS on Cardano equals one output goes back to this definitional problem we have in the crypto space. I mean, even if currently Cardano was only able to deliver one TPS, this one transaction can deliver far more outputs than one single transaction on Ethereum. This is simply a fact. What's really sad is, as a result of a six month period when Charles was at Ethereum, a handful of individuals who have clashed with him personality wise differed greatly on philosophy and ultimately how the roadmap should be delivered has resulted in almost an entire community disliking a man they've never met and in turn allowed themselves to be propagandized to such a degree that most have and may never investigate further what Cardano is actually achieving here. The saddest part in all of this is that the people actually being harmed here are the Ethereum users themselves. No matter how much dirt is thrown at Charles and how much misinformation is spread about Cardano to their community, the facts remain, Cardano is making big moves, with or without them, and I think many Ethereum users are going to be tremendously disappointed and let down as the inevitability plays out. See, guys like Evan Van Ness no doubt have massive ETH bags, even if deep down they know that tech in Cardano is far superior, it's not going to change the fact that they have and will continue to become extremely wealthy off the retail investors in their ecosystem. The sheer dislike for Charles makes them operate in the most distasteful, deceitful and at times despicable manner, demonstrating far more about their integrity than it does for the man they attempt to publicly humiliate. But the difference is, we only get glimpses, tweets and the odd video appearance from these characters in the Ethereum ecosystem, making it extremely difficult to form an accurate opinion on who they are as individuals. On the other hand, Charles is the most accessible leader in the entire blockchain space. From the unedited live AMAs, Twitter spaces and daily interactions with community on social media, there is far more footage available of Charles putting all of his personality traits, flaws and redeeming features on full display in the public domain. There's a lot to be said about this. People wonder how Cardano has built such a strong community. It's because first and foremost, Charles is still consistently delivering the very same message with the same passion, conviction and determination as he has from the very beginning. What's more, this consistency is also materializing into real world delivery in the rollout of the Cardano roadmap. Rather than a cult, we are just a community of real people with big dreams that can actually see them becoming a reality now. If changing the world is not your thing, that's okay. Just try not stand in the way or belittle those who do in fact want this to be realized. Now, speaking of changing the world, check this out from Mr. Telecom. Here, World Mobile United asked, been a while since I heard anything about the Aerostats, Mr. Telecom's any updates, asking for a friend. To which Mickey replied, waiting on final papers and then we make history and fly this big bird. So the launch of the first Aerostat is real close now. Watch this space for more updates very soon. I think the next couple of months in Cardano are going to be like nothing we've ever witnessed before. Now with big moves in mind and continuing the Maladex countdown coverage, we are now less than 24 hours away from the big announcement finally being revealed. In Saturday's update you may remember they gave us this, T-4, throwing the dice with the caption, fair chance, fair game. So the build up continued, Sunday in this T-3 post, here they make the statement, define the limits of what's possible, with this trader who looks to be engrossed in the platform, no doubt taking advantage of some of the tools Maladex will be introducing to the Cardano ecosystem. T-2 and they've taken up another level in this kind of trading bunker, with the caption, buckle up trading nerds. Here you can see this guy is fully locked in with an advanced setup, I also noticed this interesting but highly illegible writing on the fridge. Maybe nothing, but it looks like some kind of formula. Knowing Maladex, it's probably something to do with their solution to impermanent loss. But let me know in the comments what you think, and if you know what this is. Finally, in the last of these build-up posts, T-1, and we got the big one. Here, this space guy in a Maladex moon suit, with the symbol from the original countdown post on the visor, gave us this caption, One giant leap for mankind. So all will be revealed tomorrow, September 28th. I'm beyond excited at this stage. This is going to be a big day for Cardano DeFi and we'll be sure to cover all the fallout right here on Cardano Insights. Next up, when we go to Meld, as promised, I did state that we would track any updates regarding their roadmap, as in recent coverage, I did highlight how delivery seemed to have slowed throughout the year, ever since the ISPO tokens had been distributed in January. Meld did state recently that the Akamon bridge, that's the bridge between Cardano and Polygon, had taken up the majority of their focus, which may not be what the community or Meld holders want to hear, but according to Meld, will play an integral role in what they're trying to achieve in terms of user acquisition. Yesterday they gave us this announcement that the Meld roadmap has now been updated, streamlined 
and now features on their homepage. Here you can see in Q4, that's the current quarter, they are currently developing and working on the bank manager's NFT launch, Meld Shop, Meld API, onboarding Akamon node operators, and working on establishing the Meld Association, all currently confirmed to be under development. Looking at Q1 2023, they've planned the launch of the Meld DAP and DeFi wallet, a tier 1 exchange listing, implementation of the Meld DAO and Acomon audit. Interestingly, one of Q1's planned items is in fact already under development, that being Cardano pool based lending and borrowing. In Q2, they aim to deliver Cardano pool-based lending and borrowing to Mainnet, along with a multi-chain testnet version, and the Akamon bridge to Mainnet. Here they also outline conditional milestones, being the M Gold token and airdrop which is subject to delivery of physical gold to the vault. In addition, the Crypto to Fiat lending and borrowing protocol launch and Meld Neobank, previously known as Meld Finance, app and debit cards, are subject to the approval of regulatory licenses. I think in the case of Meld, after all the excitement off the back of delivering the largest ISPO to date, this increased expectation and has somewhat led to many becoming frustrated with the speed of development. But what Meld are attempting to achieve is complex, with their crypto to fiat lending and borrowing, genius self repaying loan and gold backed stablecoin that represent many development and regulatory hurdles before all of this can actually be realised. I think more patience here from the community is key. Let's see how progress develops on this revised roadmap in the coming months. I've linked the latest development diary and meld site in the description if you want to go take a deeper look at the roadmap. So that's it for today's installment of Cardano Insights as we keep track of all the developments and continue to spread those positive Cardano vibes. If you found value in the content and want to help me beat this YouTube algorithm as hard as humanly possible, then please be sure to comment, share, like, subscribe and hit that notification bell which will go a long way in pushing the channel out to a much wider audience. Anyway, we'll be back soon with your daily roundup. Until then, thanks for watching, have a great day and as always, keep it Cardano.